Good morning and welcome to worship. Uh, just a few announcements. First of all, the congregational meeting has been moved to next Sunday, February 7th, due to bad weather that is coming in. Um, and I do still need three positions, secretary, evangelism, and property. Uh, if you please, please prayerfully consider those three positions. And if you can possibly do those positions for me, please either email or call me, or you can email or call Ed as well. Uh, today's the last Sunday for our pet food pantry collection. Uh, if you bring it in during the week, because we've had this bad weather, if you bring it in during the week, I'm sure you're not too late, but just let Ed know that you're coming, therefore he can uh, be looking out for you. And without any other further announcements, uh, let us begin worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the Word was life and the life was the light of all people. The word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken, and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Moses, the Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 15. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is, what, this is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them like a I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now concerning food sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possesses knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but bi love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there, are, there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, they may not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols. So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, 
I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The word of the Lord. Jesus, the scribes, teaching in the synagogue, an unclean spirit, and the crowds. Does this combination not set itself up for some type of toxic trouble? In the words of Creedence Clearwater Revival's 1969 hit, I see a bad moon rising. First of all, let us start with Jesus of Nazareth and his authority. We know that Jesus comes to the synagogue with his disciples and begins teaching with authority. Now the scribes' teaching would depend upon their knowledge of the scriptures and specifically the traditional interpretation of the Torah. But Jesus is able to teach with the full authority as if he is God himself, which we know he is, but those present in today's gospel lesson don't know this. And here's one of the big problems. The scribes and the crowds see him as just plain old Jesus of Nazareth. Remember Nazareth, the small podunk town? And they see him as a woodworker from Nazareth. So to come up and start teaching with a godlike authority is actually an affront to the crowd's view of Jesus' social standing. Now a person's social standing was determined by their parents' social status, their birthplace, and their time of birth. And it was very dishonorable to claim a change to one's social standing. So those present at the synagogue see Jesus as a common woodworker born to poor parents from a crummy little town. So grabbing the mic, so to speak, in the synagogue was a bit of a crowd shocker. But notice what happens when he does this. Who recognizes him? An unclean spirit in a man in the synagogue. The unclean spirit knows he is Jesus of Nazareth, and he knows that he is the Holy One of God, and he blurts this out to the crowd. But Jesus orders the spirit to be silent and to come out of the man. But the act of exercising an unclean spirit confirms Jesus' spiritual authority and assures the crowd that this man has a higher spiritual rank than just a common woodworker from Nazareth. And our gospel ends with, at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. So what we have at this point is a religious establishment that is about to have its world rocked. What we have is a religious establishment that has been teaching and worshiping under the same old rules and the same old traditions for, well, forever. And here comes Jesus who preaches and teaches directly from God who bypasses all the traditional rules, ritual, and status quo. 
So the question becomes, is today's church being held back by the unclean spirits of all the traditional rules, ritual, and status quo? Are we no longer ministering to the broken and helpless in order to be comfortable in worship? Is this one of the reasons why so many people now want nothing to do with the church? What if mainline religion or all religion took on Jesus' method of ministering out amongst the people? What if the church worked amongst the people and the area's social service agencies to help chase away the unclean spirits of unemployment, poverty, or illness? Isn't that really what the church is called to do? Now this is something that would seriously take some doing. Changing the mindset of the religious status quo to go out and work with the people who need it most. Now don't get me wrong, I love Good Shepherd's Concern of the Month and our summer lunch program where we attempt to help as many people and groups as we possibly can. But what if all churches challenged their status quo and committed to go forth and help as many people as possible? I wonder how that would globally change the church. But back to our gospel. I call this particular gospel an uh-oh text. The crowds have been alerted, the demons have been exorcised, and the scribes are grumbling. Uh-oh. To be continued. Amen. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church and its ministries, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, 
those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV AIDS, those struggling with mental illnesses, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need, especially those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place, and for other needs in our community, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, in thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen.